Oliver needs eight for a title. Bang! There's the emotion. There it is. Boom! Jordan Richard. The champion again. A historic venue on the PWBA Tour. It is the Cherry Bowl live from Rockford, Illinois. That's the 2024 PWBA Bowlers Journal Rockford Open. Live here on Bowl TV, Emil Williams Jr. alongside Sidney Brummett, Patrick Martinez on the ones and twos as we get set to get you underway. Liz Colkin will start. She will start the match one through five, but we start with the four and five. It's Colkin, it's Shayna Ung. We're underway. Bang. Nice start for Liz Colkin. Our top seed, Lee Jane Sin from Malaysia. The number two seed tonight, Dasha Kovalova. Josie Barnes, the number three seed. Shayna Ung, the number four seed. Again, and Liz Colkin is the fifth seed. Colkin, who likes to be in a position to climb a ladder, uh, said she's in that position. But as is Shayna Ung, a two time champion. Let's watch Shayna and talk about these two players. Two, four, five. There for Shayna Ong. She gets a round of applause here from the crowd, from the crowd here at the Cherry Bowl. Yeah, realistically, not a bad start there for Shayna coming into her first show of the season. Both their first show for Liz and Shayna. Um, just last week, had the opportunity to cross with Liz, and she snuck into a cash spot and. Seems like she's riding the wave of momentum for good bowling as we get the tour started. We're going to see Shayna Ong back in a championship atmosphere here. The 34-year-old Singaporean. She's been on the national team for Singapore since 2005. Won the title at the 2018 Las Vegas Open. Then the 2019 Sonoma County Open title. Rona Park, her last show made was the 2022 U.S. Women's Open. Where she finished fifth. That title was won by Erin McCarthy. Her Singaporean teammates actually just to her right. Great shot there for prior to this one. High flush. That end over end ball roll. Much different ball roll than you see a lot of players uh, on tour, which in many cases, and I think this week also, able to give her advantage. She can get it through the front, but when she can't get it there, she can give it a little loft through the front part of the lane as well. We thought that was something that was very important, getting it through the fronts. Yeah, absolutely. And she knows more forward ball roll also allows her to keep it in front of her. It doesn't force her to open up the lane. Hey, it was a good look at Liz Colkin's arsenal. Right now she's in the Teal Rhino Pro. This is match one. Just underway here if you're just joining us in the Cherry Bowl. Early advantage to Colkin after the early double. Lots of chatter amongst players as we got started this week um, after the practice session that you know, maybe symmetric pieces were going to be better on the fresh. We're seeing Liz start with one here. Great shot again. And Colkin, who ended up throwing two different balls at the end of the round of 12. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe it was actually on 13 and 14, no less. Starts with the right ball, confirmed with her ball reps prior to this one. Yeah, it was fairly common for the left lane to hook more. Uh, in the building throughout the entire center than the right lane. So it was not unrealistic for Liz to have to throw two different balls. We could see that here at the end of this match if they the two lanes get separated enough. Here's Ong. Time flush again. <laughs> Sounds a great opening match this one already kind of mirroring what we saw last week. There's a look at Shayna's arsenal. 
She's in the absolute power. 8.5 hook rating. No 10 hook ratings out there. I'm a little disappointed. On trailing by 10. Josie Barnes already starting her warm up. The way these two are striking this match is going to be over pretty quickly, no matter who wins. A little off there. And very, very tough break there and no breakdown of the 6, 7, 10. Yeah, Shayna's showing us the opposite of what I talked about with Liz, starting with a bigger asymmetric piece. It is a solid. It's going to force her feet further to the left um, more quickly than the pattern really wants her to go uh, with Liz because of her slower ball speed and the amount she wants to rotate it. Being in a symmetric, smaller core is going to help her stay to the right. Oh, give it a run, Shayna. All right. First open from either player. And the way Liz Culkin has started this match and the way she is determined to get back into the winner's circle, again, in a spot that she has personally enjoyed. She's run the ladder multiple times, most notably for her only major title, the U.S. Women's Open in 2018. Lead is now 25. All right, just a 10 pin. It's a good shot from Liz. Whenever the women got the ball a slightly right of, you know, where a tracer would typically be on a different surface, uh, the ball was slow down the lane, labored a little bit, and sometimes you would see it 210. So lucky to come up here with just a light shaker 10. Good spare. Liz Colgan, round one in second place at plus 188 in round two, 10th place at plus 151. And uh, she talked about that. A bit of a roller coaster for round number two. And then shot a big game to make sure she was on to the cashers round. Ended up seventh after the cashers round this morning. And then, of course, had to stay in the top five. She bowled very well. Averaging 213.25. Great shot. Looking from Schenectady, New York. I know all of Schenectady and got a ton of friends. Hopefully somebody called the Yankees so they would be watching Liz Golkin. <laughs> Entire baseball team tuned in. Well, that's when you know you're good. See how Shayna Unk can respond here, Sid. <coughs> nice low level. And that one went immediately left. Just a three pin, though. Yeah, I'm sitting here shaking my head as I watch the low level camera because it helps you really see how the ball is transitioning, especially because the ball has multiple colors. It just wants to go forward really quickly. The pattern's 44 feet, but the generous amount of oil stops at about 38. So if she needs to go to a piece that will be cleaner through the front part of the lane. Spare taken care of. Again, waiting in the wings, number three seed, Josie Barnes. What a very, very good week for Josie so far. She spent three rounds in third place, round two in eighth, so very consistent. And she will get the winner of this one. Shayna trailing by 24 pins. a better one. Oh, how about that light mixer? Yeah, it's a much better shot. I just wouldn't count on it striking every time. I, I think her shot making is more than good enough, and 
a piece that's not as slow and forward as early could help her. It was really easy to feel trapped on this pattern this week. Kind of like, okay, if I get my ball too far to the right, I'm going to 210. If I get it in front of me, I'm going to 3610. That's where I see Shayna's at currently. You heard Liz say hit, and that it did. Five out of six now for Culkin. Again, a look at the arsenal left side of your screen. That lead increases to 34 pins. And of what that arsenal is, of course, you see the lowest hooking rated ball. Anything uh, from, from just from the rating, right, according to what she's using, that one hooks the least. Are you surprised by that? No, it's been a benchmark type piece for Liz. Benchmark pieces for each player are going to differ slightly. Heard her say lay off. That one she got in front of her. But they're going to be different for each type of player. Liz, because her ball speed is slower. Um, the teal rhino, because of the smaller core, lower differential is going to be a piece that is reliable for her. She'll know that it's going to be um, smoother off of the friction. She can keep it in front of her. 3 six, ten. I don't know if this one is anyone's best friend. But we call on our best friends when we need them. And an open frame. Back score now for Conkin. 244 in an opening for Shana Ung. Again, the absolute power, eight and a half, according to the rating. Five ball arsenal. We will have bowling ball giveaways, speaking of uh, equipment. One in between each match, so stay tuned for that. I'm going to look a little bit right down lane and uh, said, I think you saw it the whole way. Yeah, it's the same idea as before, right? And she probably feels like well, I have to throw it perfect right now. And so we saw on her ball court, on her ball card, she had a phase two right below that absolute power. Similar hook rating, she can stay in the same part of the lane, just the core is symmetric, more of a benchmark ball um, for Shayna and her ball speed, her ball roll. I'd love to see her go to that. Two, four, five, handle. She did have a brief conversation with her tour reps um, in between that sixth, or um, pardon me, yeah, sixth and seventh frame. I would imagine the conversation was something along the lines of let's just move a little bit further left. The eyes just have to go with you when you go further left. They can't separate, or you may 210. Be a big move coming up. Oh, wow. Just probably inches away from that trip four going her way instead. See, trails by 20. Was closer. To me, it feels that she lofted that one more. So that also could have been the move that she discussed with her tour reps. Shana uses urethane to shoot at her spares. Not a bad move when you have to fly overseas with bowling balls. You know, you're going to bring your thing anyways. <laughs> Might as well not have a spare ball. Take up precious space. It's an underrated difficulty traveling with equipment. Thankfully for individuals like Cecil Scarborough, who's telling Highlanding TV talent stats tonight. He's also our player services manager. Thank you, Cecil. Well, that's a good break there just to 2A, talking about being right down lane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you saw her body language. She knew it right off of her hand. Too far right down lane, begging it to stay to the right. Just please don't 2 4 eight, 10 
good look at the trophy as you see on your left, left side of your screen. Last time a national stop in this building was held in 2022. Liz Culkin was on the show. She was the number one seed then. She lost to Stephanie Johnson, who was the number five seed. Liz Culkin now the fifth seed, trying to do what Stephanie did, and that's climb the ladder. Oh, wow. Skinny jeans. All you got to do is make it. Still with the 20 pin advantage. That max score has dipped to 234. Shayna on max 214. Pretty important shot here for Culkin. We don't want to give Shayna another opportunity. Foundation. Bang. Great shot there from Liz. Ninth frame. Important to set up the confidence for the 10th force your opponent to know she has to make really good shots. Well, as we quickly look ahead here, I can step up again, strike frames nine and ten. It's a replay up top. Good shot. She would force a double from Liz Colkin, but we got to get there first. Ninth frame. That's got to hook a ton. One, two, four, seven for Shayna Ong. Yeah, this is one of those times where as a player, in, for some reason, especially in women's sports, we tend to blame ourselves. We'll say, oh, it was me, I made the mistake, I threw it bad, um, I made the wrong um, move. It could be any of those things. Uh, from my seat, where I'm sitting, of course I'm not the one bowling, but from where I'm sitting, I see that Shayna just chose the wrong piece. The ASIM forced her too far left and did not give her enough room for error. When she got it in front of her, it was in the flattest part of the lane. And when it missed to the right, there's too much volume in the middle, and it simply pushed her ball even further to the right. So it made her mistakes, although they may have been small, seem really big. Max score now 200 for Shayna Ong. And uh, at that point, pretty simple situation for Liz Colkin. Nine out would be enough. There's another good one. And she threw two really good ones in frames two and three. Uh, got one in in the fourth, which caused a split. Yeah, when she aces them, it'll be 10 straight back. No questions asked. Shayna is powerful. She is accurate. Um, you know, she's what you would expect as the standard on our tour to win a tour title. And this fifth place finish here in Rockford, I feel like, is just the, the ball starting to roll down the hill for Shayna this year. We're going to see her pick up some momentum as we head into the Queens next week. Indeed, and Team Singapore will be on the PWBA Tour through the conclusion of the U.S. Women's Open. So they will have two majors to bowl. Last year they bowled five events. There's a little bit of a, from a PWBA perspective, an, an unlike Shayna year. Only cash once. One eighty nine. Well, just a couple of pins for Liz Culkin. A good opportunity for Liz to experiment here in this 10th frame. Looks like a uh, the GB4 hybrid. That one's a fan favorite out here on the women's tour and also on the men's. Quicker option. Lower RG. Medium differential. So like a ball that wants to get through the fronts because it's a hybrid, but 
Also, the differential doesn't make it want to hook too much. And she's asymmetric. So the core is staple. And she switched to that from a Teal Rhino Pro. That is what she was throwing for the first nine frames of this game. As we head into this next match, I would imagine that Liz will stay with that Teal Rhino. Outside of the not so great shots that she threw, every shot that hit the pocket except for one struck. It's always a good sign. All right, Sherry Bull, let's get a huge round of applause for our 222 to 189. Shayna Ong. Shayna Ong, good to see her back in a stepladder final situation. Josie Barnes will face Liz Colkin. Match number two. Of course, Barnes will have some practice as well as Jane Sin of Malaysia. I'm on with it. Nasha Kovalova. Again, the number two seed there. Well, we've still got plenty of matches left. I'd like to thank our gold partners. One of those individuals certainly is Storm, the leading manufacturer of high-performance bowling balls. Visit stormbowling.com to pick your next Storm bowling ball and always remember to bowl up a Storm bowling ball giveaway next on Bowl TV. What is it about bowling that captivates us so much? Mastery of the game is impossible, but perfection is just within reach. Success seems to lie 60 feet ahead, but the real battle takes place six inches between your ears. So if no matter how many times you fail, you would still do anything, and I mean anything, just to get 1% better. We know exactly how you feel. Very nice musical selection here in the background. And that means it's time for the first bowling ball giveaway of the evening, a Storm bowling ball giveaway. Again, thank you to Storm. We will have three of those again tonight. Three of those. Here on Bowl TV. Sid, you ready to uh, give out some more equipment? I love giving away stuff. And now everybody else can uh, enter the giveaway because Kim won. Yeah. <laughs> You're, you are so right about that. And, and that means Kim is probably going to win again, and she deserves it. She deserves it. All right, folks, again, there's one countdown. Make sure you're out of full screen so you can see the prompts at the bottom of your video screen. You can see it both on the desktop, laptop, or, and, of course, your mobile device. Once the giveaway countdown, the first one, has concluded, you will see the opportunity to simply click Submit Entry. That's all you have to do, click Submit Entry. It's in blue with white lettering. Click that and you will be entered to win a Storm Bowling Ball. No picking, you simply just gotta click Submit Entry and you're good to go. We will have Shayna Ung, a quick word, question for Leia Zwei coming up next. All right, Shayna, fantastic yeah. bowling all week. Thank you. Uh, unfortunately, you came, fell just a little short shooting 189 against 222 against Liz Culkin. Yeah. Tell me about what was going through your head during that match. Uh, I was just trying to slow down. You know, as with every TV show, we, um, we tend to uh, go a little faster. So that was what I was trying to do. And on a separate note, I mean, if you look at stats, uh, my, my, my fresh scores weren't that good. So, you know, the ball reps try to drill me something to, to give me a couple of extra pins on the fresh. Uh, but I guess, uh, you know, I, I, I tried to execute it um, as best as I could. And yeah, but Liz bowled great, and, and she's, she's deserving of the win. Awesome. And unfortunately, we did see a uh, 6, 7, 10 a few times. Sorry? We saw the 6, 7, 10 out there. What was going through your mind when you were trying to shoot that split? 
six, seven, ten. Yeah. Actually, that was a really good shot. Um, just that the left lane uh, hooked a little more. Uh, it's, the left lane has been hooking more all week and um, it just kept uh, picking up on me. Uh, I made a move but uh, it wasn't enough. So, so yeah. yeah and, we, and we saw uh, your fellow teammates out there rooting you on. One shot here for Josie Barnes left. Uh, Sid, how do you anticipate Josie playing the lanes at this point? Well, I was watching practice, like the initial warm-ups on this pair, and the one, two, and three seed received time on the lanes before um, the four and five got here. And Josie spent the majority of that time throwing her spare ball uh, left to right at the one three. So I would imagine we're going to see Josie try and play up against where she was throwing that spare ball. I, I have a feeling she was trying to create some artificial hold for herself. Um, <laughs> which is smart on her end. She needs it. She's not somebody that can really throw it to the right and have her ball um, come back and go through the pins the right way. So creating that hold so she can get far enough left is extremely smart, and hopefully she'll utilize that to the best of her abilities. Oh, okay. Spicy. <laughs> Good use of that again. That'll get us going. All right, guys, second match of the evening here. Who advances? Looks like Liz is going to get us started once again. All right, Cherry Bowl, here we go. Let's give you ladies a huge round of applause here at the PWBA Polar Journal Rock for Open. Liz is going to get us started here, get on this left lane. Interesting because Josie gets lane choice and the left lanes tend to hook more. Shot Colkin. Great shot. Still in the same bowling ball. The Teal Rhino Pro. We will see the first opportunity here for Josie Barnes. There's a look at the arsenal. I like, I like the little times two we got going on. She does have two in the bag. Uh, you can see there, pin up looked like above the bridge from Hermitage, Tennessee. I'm sure the entire Barnes Ernest family watching. Nice low level look here to open up things. A major champion. Barnes won the 2021 U.S. Women's Open. For a record $100,000. Three standard titles to her credit as well. Greater Cleveland Open in 2019, the East Hartford Open in 18, and the Rochester Open in 16. It's interesting that you say that Josie won the 2018 Hartford Open. And I say that because when we were bowling on this pattern this week, I was telling my support system, I said, hey, this the most similar pattern I've ever felt to this was what we bowled on um, in Connecticut. I didn't know Josie had won that one. Um, but we bowled on, it looked like a Christmas tree looking graph, but it forced our feet <laughs> um, further to the left and used the middle part of the lane as hold and required a lot of patience, that pattern did that when you left a single pin because you hit the pocket and it was a great shot, you just had to say, okay, you know, that was a good one. I'm going to get up and throw another good one. So, so interesting that she won that one as well. Match number two, Barnes, strike in Brooklyn and Frank two, handled the spare, not a Colkin. Won the opening match, 222 to 189 over Shayna Ung. And that one right down lane and the ultimate penalty, 2 8 10. I would go out on a limb, a very short limb, and say that was the most left split we saw this week. 2 8 10s were easy to leave. Why was that, in your opinion, Sid? With the pattern being 44 feet, 
the oil types we pulled on forced our feet to the left fairly quickly, and the pattern being 44 feet. Um, if you miss to the right, there's not a lot of room down lane for your ball to hook and come back. So you had to move your feet further left and move your eyes with you, shallow angles. So a slight miss to the right when the lanes aren't super developed or no one played to the right meant an opportunity to shoot a 2 8 10. After the open frame, here's Culkin, frame three. Oh my, now back to back splits, one in, uh, in a different direction. It's right on the right lane, got that one in on the left. Yeah, it didn't appear, like it was an okay shot from Liz. The last match, I imagined that that one would have pushed. That's More got than a chance, likely. that's got a chance. Oh my. More than likely it's just a time for a move on that lane. Just heard her say, I didn't hate either of those. So right or left lane. Well, that, that's got to put somebody in a very interesting predicament right there. That, that just sounds like a ball change impending here. We'll find out. Either way, Barnes will step up with a 24-pin advantage. Capitalize and a four-pin. Good shot. We heard from the tour reps, at least on the Brunswick side this week. <laughs> you know, I had second game in the whole tournament. I left seven 10 pins. And next game, had four more in the first six frames. And I said to my tour rep, he was like, yeah, you're fine. You got the pocket. And I said, well, is this where I tell you that I've left a bunch of them? He said, yeah, but you have the pocket. So the replay, top left there. Spare for Josie Barnes. Again, Barnes finished round one in third place. At plus 158, dropped to eighth after round two last night at plus 172. Got back to third place in the Casters round and then remained there after the round of 12 had concluded, averaging 217 for the weekend. This is their seventh career show, which I had to double check it. It just didn't seem right to me. Wow. She will not get a break there. Pocket 7-10. Her winning percentage, though, leading into this one, Josie, with four wins. Six career shows. 66% winning percentage in championship round appearances. It's about 46 more percent than it <laughs> statistically yeah. would be. Bounce. It's a small volume, but she takes full advantage when she gets there. And that's, uh, I mean, obviously that spells winning right there. Now Culkin will step up trailing by 10. See that ball deflect there. Is trying to get back on track. Same ball. Bang. Well, that nine pin Ooh. nearly stood up. Holy smokes. I can see her good friend out here, Mallory, right behind her. She's laughing with her about that potential nine pin. Yeah, it looked like it was like double tapped and, and nearly stood up. I mean, we saw some interesting stuff in, uh, in Cedarville. Last week, we've seen some interesting leaves this week as well. Ooh. Trip four there from Liz. Ultimately, that one was left off of her hand also, and it held, saw her talk to her ball reps and say, like, should I just shift to the left a little bit? appears that she did that and could go even further on that left lane. Big double there for Culkin. Now that blower 7-10. 
gives us an even match. That's good. Indeed. Saw that one all the way through, start to finish, and it looked great off the hand. Looks like a good ball choice based on certainly what the lanes are doing. Again, 44 feet in length here, this lane condition. Great look at that shot. Barnes trying to match the Culkin double. Six frame. Bang. That one was left off her hand. She knew it. Possibly that hold she created for herself in practice. Like I said, I don't know if it was on purpose. She could have been shooting, I don't know, the one three for fun. But it would give you some hold because she spent the majority of the time doing that. Colgan trailing by 10. Wow, and she just cannot stay away from trouble. Greek Church this time. It's been a, a wide variety now of splits for Liz Colkin in this match. Heard her say good shot after that one. Again, the 2 8 10 on the right lane. 4 7 10 on the left, and now a Greek Church. Nearly gave it a run. Well, Sid, what does Liz Colkin have to do here? Does she make, does she take a risk? Is this a risk uh, taking type of situation right now? Uh, I'm assessing the conversation sure. I just saw happen in front of us, but no, I do not think so. Liz needs to make a bigger move and only because she is moving into where Shayna was for the entire last match, where a lot of the practice shots went down the lane. So oil types are bowling on require bigger moves. This is a big shot, a little left. Oh, and then it's time, makeable certainly, but a 310 nonetheless. Right now, I believe Liz's shot making is coming down to not her physical ability, but her mind seems to be running pretty quick. Even in between the sixth and seventh frame, she tried to come over and have a conversation with her tour rep. And it almost seems like he said, like, we just need to slow down. Not like our ball speed, but just our thinking pattern. And Shayna said it really well in her great spare from Liz. Said it really well in her interview. I mean, these TV matches, they go by really fast. And we tend to go quicker than we want to. Um, that includes the pace of play and also how quickly our brains are going. There's not an athlete in the world that competes well when their brain is running 100 miles an hour. Barnes with a big opportunity here. Leading by 29. Vanderbilt Hall of Famer. And a week 10 there. Inducted into the Vanderbilt Athletic Hall of Fame in 2013, a nine-time Team USA member. It's been five years on Junior Team USA. Currently the associate head women's bowling coach at Vanderbilt. She actually had three athletes graduate this weekend. Shout out to Amanda Najokas, Jen Laredo, and Caroline Thasier. Yeah, Josie is, we have a lot of really cool conversations and we were both in Las Vegas just a few weeks ago and had the opportunity to have dinner together. And we were talking about just how challenging it is as a collegiate coach to find the time to be with your athletes and then also balance the office work and then investing into your own bowling. Like when we spend that many hours in the center with our athletes, it's exhausting to then put your shoes on and invest into yourself. So a huge round of applause for Josie for doing that. Spare made in the seventh, eighth frame offering. Will not trip a four. Very closed angle, very tight angle through the front and down lane, Sid. 
Yeah, Josie's style fits that well. Just her ball roll gets through the front part of the lane in a good way on this on this pattern, on this surface. She's using a cleaner cover, stronger core. said it during the round of 12, but to me, Josie feels, I, I feel as though Josie is just pulling professional games. Like every game I've seen her bowl, it's I hit the pocket, I make my spare. I hit the pocket, I make my spare. And this game is no different than the ones that we saw today. And it could pay off for her being patient here. Ball change, GB4 hybrid for Culkin. Give herself a chance here. And it's the same situation, big four. Look good for about 35 feet. A fifth split. She made the 310, but really four splits that uh, there's not much you can do with. Yeah, your note was interesting there. You said you know, it looked, ooh, almost makes that. You said it looked pretty good until about 35 feet. And going for the GB4 hybrid is a quicker response bowling ball. So you can see it starts to change directions. And when it does, it is pretty sideways off the end of the pattern. And I like to say it a lot to a nauseating amount, especially to myself, because I have the same tendency. Quick response bowling balls are quick response no matter where the friction is. So for Liz, the there is early friction here. This is a high friction surface. We're bowling on fire. We're bowling on current. So if you're gonna go to a quicker response bowling ball, you have to make the move further left, which she did there. And it was a, a great shot from her. Max score for Liz Colkin, 172. Max for Josie Barnes. 214 for Josie. It's a simple recipe here. Simply stay out of trouble, and then she'll have an opportunity actually to do some testing. Going in her 84th career event, and she finally gets a trip four, and that's going to be the one. Great shot there from Josie. At this point, it's just maintain momentum going into the next match. Make sure what you're going to do on the left lane is clear. Been waiting for a trip four four. Good point. Tenth frame. He's a handful and gets ten. And Josie Barnes will advance. Semifinals here this evening of, of the Bowler's Journal Rockford Open. Last three years, again, 2022 national stop, 2023 regional. Now another national stop here in 2024. Very good run from the 30 row, Liz Colkin. Move left there for Josie. We're going to see a ball change. Appears to be the fondly named Vibo. My college kids kept saying that. They were like, I want to drill a Vibo. Guys, what does that even mean? It's an excellent acronym. They had to cue me in. I wasn't. They caught me slacking. You were not hip to the virtual I, energy blackout? I was not hip. No. I'm officially to the point where I have to look up what they say to me on Urban Dictionary sometimes. That's not a good feeling. Well, you do work with a, a college audience, of mm -hmm. course, so yeah. <laughs> you be careful when you get to Urban Dictionary. <laughs> it's not always good. <laughs> nice run by Josie Barnes. Nice game. And she will advance. Think about how, how her game plan will unfold here. Liz 
Liz Colkin, a nice round of applause. She bowled very well. She tried to give it a run back to the title match here, but uh, the last time's out here in Rockford, she's made the show both times. So this is, you know, one of the, the favorites on Liz's list. That three game national record of 890, just shot 1155 not too long ago at Town Academy in Schenectady. With the final score 213 to 150. And we continue to thank our wonderful goal partners. One of them is Kaggle, the official lane maintenance provider of the United States Bowling Congress and the PWBA. And welcome inside the booth, ladies and gentlemen, Emil Williams Jr. alongside Sidney Brummett. And uh, Sid, obviously we've been treated to uh, two very good matches, obviously varying styles uh, as well. We knew it would be very intriguing based on uh, the finalists uh, in this stepladder finals. Have you been surprised by the game plans uh, of the players that we've seen? And obviously Josie Barnes uh, just defeated Liz Culkin, so she will be moving on. Yeah, not a ton of surprises from the players so far. Uh, Shayna did start further left than what we anticipated. That could impact the players coming after her. Uh, the moves could be quicker into more cleaner bowling balls than anticipated uh, with just four games on the pair. But ultimately, no, not a ton of surprises. From the Liz Colkin perspective, or excuse me, the Josie Barnes perspective, she's got to face Dasha Koval over here uh, in a minute. What do you expect to see from Dasha as we get, get set in? Well, I think Dasha's going to get into a cleaner, asymmetric piece, similar to what Josie is doing. She would get left of Josie, which could give her the advantage. Uh, ultimately, I think it's going to come down to pin carry. We do have a the bowling ball giveaway coming up next. Liz Colkin is standing by. Let's go to Liz with Leia Zweig. All right, Liz. Unfortunately, uh, we didn't see the same reaction that we did game one. Can you tell me a little bit about the difference in lane play between the first match towards the second? Yeah, I mean, uh, I had a really good look the first game. Uh, I had spoken to you earlier about being the fifth seed and seeing the lanes kind of transition. Um, I had spoke with my ball reps, hey, listen, when the teal rhino starts to go, we knew what ball to go to. Um, unfortunately, the red circles, you know, when, when, you, when you're going through transition, you can't, you know, get five, six, you're hoping a six pin or, you know, three, six. Couldn't stay away from those opens. Um, I went to the right ball eventually, but unfortunately just kind of split too much before doing the right thing. If I could go back in time, I'd probably try to see it a little sooner. Um, you know, but unfortunately when you're trying to go to the next ball, you want to stay away from those opens. And this time around, it didn't happen. We looked fantastic all week. We hope to see you at the Queens next week. Perfect. Fantastic. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Great job by Leia Zweig, Liz Colkin, who bowled, again, excellent, but ran into uh, what looked to be simply, uh, and, and, and it's not simple uh, when you're into it, right? Uh, trying to figure out the ball motion, which ball to go to. As we watch Dasha Kovalova and uh, Jane Sin in a couple of shots here in practice uh, for Dasha, rebounding nicely from last week's a uh, very difficult ending to the round of 12, just missing uh, the show. Handles it beautifully this week. Spent a ton of time leading and in our second place as the second bowling ball giveaway is underway. Again, a bowling ball giveaway is underway. Please get out of full screen mode so you can see the prompts. Once the countdown is complete, simply click Submit Entry and you will be entered to win our second bowling ball giveaway from Brunswick. Look at Dasha giving out bowling balls and she doesn't even know it. She has some spare balls that she designed. You're right. So she you could get does. one of those. She always does. She talked about a new one uh, earlier in the week. Yeah, it has blue on one side and yellow on the other in honor of Ukraine. Submit entry. Don't forget about that, folks. That's all you got to do. That's the best way to do it. It's the only way to do it, in fact. Click submit entry to be entered for your chance to win. We will have one more bowling ball giveaway. And according to my notes, it'll be courtesy of Motive. I think it speaks to just how consistent Dasha has been on tour that you say 
you know, this week was a good rebound, right? You know, for some players, we would say, oh, we're going to build on last week. You know, we're going to build on a sixth or seventh place finish, whatever um, spot she formally finished in last week. And with Dasha, we say we have to rebound from that, you know, because it's tough with somebody of her caliber to just barely miss the show. So with her, it's just maintaining that consistency that she has. Congrats, Rick. You got yourself a Brunswick bowling ball. Make sure you reach out uh, if necessary. The first thing is you should make sure you check your email. You should see some correspondence. Gold TV marketing squad. And we'll get in touch with you to get all of the details necessary to get you your bowling ball. Should you not hear uh, from the squad, then you should reach out to marketing at bowl.com. But wait for them to reach out to you first. Kovalova will start the match. Now living in Muskegon, Michigan. High flush for Dasha Kovalova, the five-time champion. She played them similarly to Josie, which we expected. Got the word from player services that Josie is throwing a pinup DNA coil. They drilled this one for the show. So players have the opportunity to utilize. We have this awesome thing called the tour truck that comes around with us and each brand that is a registered product as a part of the PWBA has the opportunity to keep bowling balls on that tour truck for players to drill in between rounds. So on Friday, you cannot drill in between squads. Great shot there from Josie. Goes right through the eight pin. But you can drill bowling balls after the practice session, um, after Friday, and then headed into the show as well. Barnes was left on that shot. If you haven't already, folks, make sure you're subscribing to the PWBA YouTube channel. Be a ton of content, uh, new content that has been uh, been shot, being edited, and that uh, we'll be posting pretty soon. So be on the lookout for new content. What Sid was talking about, though, actually, there's a vid video about that from last season. Kind of the truck process and what goes down. I think Sid was the tour guy, were you not? I think so. I think somehow I laid out my own bowling ball and everything. I don't really know how that happened. That's a good look at uh, Dasha's arsenal, the Outer Limits Pearl. That ball was out a lot for Dasha, and it did a lot of that. It was going to be important for Dasha to get off to a good start here, just to settle in. Earlier we were talking about Dasha and uh, you know, talking about last week and you know, making sure that did not affect um, after shooting 189 in game five not to have anything go wrong uh, in game six. And you said bowl the first frame would be the, the mindset you would encourage. That's still the case, I imagine, right? Yeah, absolutely. For Dasha right now, the only goal is I'm going to execute in the third frame. And it's the outer limits. It's ball she likes. I'm surprised the, uh, it's, uh, which one is this? It's one of the verges. The damn good verge is not... <laughs> in the arsenal for Dasha because that, that's one of her favorites as well. I can relate. I can relate. That one's a good one. Yeah, I, I had the opportunity to hop cross with Hope Gramley this week and the mindset I just talked about with Dasha, you know, let's just, let's pull the third frame. Um, yeah, Hope got off to a great start at this event. I believe she ended up with a 12th place finish here this week and 
And somebody said, what the heck? How are you striking so much? <laughs> you know, they were like, how are you striking so much? And she goes, I don't even know. Like, I'm not worried about striking. I'm worried about making good shots. Um, and same idea here for Dasha. It's not about how do we get a good result. It's how do we execute and then make the moves that are necessary to have a better result the next time. Champion will take home $20,000 tonight. The runner-up will take home 10000 7,500 for third, 6,500 for fourth, 5,500 for fifth. Get the 10 out. At this point with Josie, the only thing I'm worried about is a 10 pin standing. You know, her shot quality has been, to me, near perfect. You know, as players, we are more nitpicky about our shot quality. Another look here at Josie's shot. Ball goes through the nine pin slightly, six pin hits the 10 late. But to me, it looked like she was bowling incredible. Barnes, bang. That was a no doubter right there for a huge double. And a lead change. Josie now leading by one. Dasha will step up. A small deficit. We've watched a ton of shows. At this point, we all have. And you know, we just talked about, Sid mentioned it, the, the speed of the show. But for Dasha, this is her 18th show. It's very hard to believe when you think about it, right? Yeah, absolutely. This is show number 18. And just the two pin as the eight pin falls backwards. She made four shows in 2023, but did not win. Made three in 2022 to comb the Pepsi Classic. Two titles in each of 2021 and 2019. Of course, that 2019 season was the breakout year for Dasha. As you see the replay, light. Thankful to, lead to uh, get the 10 and the 8 out there, just the single pin. There's that spare ball we were talking about. Yeah, I mean, and, and how many people can say that they design their own spare ball and throw it? And then you'll see other people using it because, you know, they sell it. <laughs> That's impressive. Yeah. It's all of her jerseys. Like she draws them all. Has them printed by her, her sponsor. The artiste, Dasha Kovalova. Right now trailing by two. That was left the whole way. <laughs> <laughs> good lefty look at the end, but she got a good break. See if she'll be able to capitalize. You know, sometimes you just mess up. Like, you just miss your target. And to me, that was it with Dash. You know, when your launch angles are that shallow and you miss in front of you, it's just going to go Brooklyn. And you hope that you leave an easy spare. But ultimately, we're all human. We're going to miss sometimes. That looks good. Oh, oh my goodness. Elizabeth. I'm coming to join you. I just knew it was going to happen on this show. The eight pin got me, folks. Hopefully it does not get Josie Barnes. It looked good the entire way, and obviously you saw the end result. Real quick, Sid, when you, when you left, have left you know, tough pins like that, you get that bad break uh, in situations. Just, just how do you just quickly say, all right, you know, it's over and done with it is what it is and get to the next frame. How do you process that? Not very well is my answer to that question. Um, because I overanalyze, right? Part of my job is to coach and to sit here and talk about what other people are doing. And so my brain says, well, here's why you left that and here's what happens. I have a hard time looking at it as just a bad break. I always say that there are no bad breaks in bowling. Everything happens for a reason. And so as a player, one thing that I could do better and that I think Josie does extremely well is just say, it happens. It's bowling. 
It is indeed bowling. That's a one pin advantage for Barnes. Trying to keep it that way. It's left. We had one of those earlier in the match and only, only left a three pin once more. Three pin, much easier to make than a 310. Double tap on that single pin for Josie. That's always a good sign that you aced it. Even match now for Kovalova and Barnes. One more look at the Arsenal. Waiting in the wings, the number one seed, Jane Sin, away from the tour since 2019 that has been bowling competitively and she's shown it here. Dasha. Bang. Best shot we've seen from Dasha yet this match. And then just like that, it's a 10 pin advantage again for Kovalova. And all of a sudden, well folks, this one has the feel that the difference could simply be an eight pin. So plenty of frames left. Adash has thrown a ton of shots like that. It was a slow start to round one for Dasha. 12th place, you see the replay in the top corner. Finished in second at the end of qualifying Friday night. That one left off of her hand as well. Wow. And I tell you, folks, what has been consistent, and I'm, Sid, I'm sure you would agree, the ability to break down splits. If, if you were, were positive in that category, you, you probably were in the, the round of 12. Because outside of that, it was not pretty. And she leaves a three. Or excuse me, be a six, seven. Beautiful spare ball, maybe, maybe. Quality attempt there. Goal is for the ball to hit the right side of the six pin, slide it over into the seven. She ends up hitting the six pin just a little bit heavy. So it goes back and left rather than just to the left. Th that would be the stat I stats I would love to see. How many splits players broke down and, and how that correlated to their performance overall. Barnes back in the lead on the bench, trying to extend it. Hook, 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 and now trouble of her own. Josie sees a split, and then, not that she wanted to, but doubles down on it here. See her shaking her head, didn't like that one. Appears to me like it was missed off of her hand, and so when we miss it at the bottom, or it's a little bit too forward, that can exaggerate the miss making it look like she missed further right than probably what she really did. Two ten, didn't get it to the left there. Now a nine pin deficit for Josie Barnes and now the frames are starting to run out here. Max scores. 225 for Barnes, 234 for Kovalova. Key shot here for Barnes. Husband Kyle, daughter Lisa Ruth, sister Jessica, father Larry. All watching. Oh, and a late love tap on the seven. Maybe the one course shot that she obviously loved to have back there if you're Joe. She got away from her a little bit in the seventh. The two players 
trade splits in the seventh frame. Light mixer catches the seven. Now Kovalova with an opportunity. Trying to get back on track. She strikes here. She will hold the cards. Nine pin advantage. Oof. In danger there, but just the 2 8. Yeah, steep through the front part of the lane. Ultimately causing her to leave that 2 8. Um, a different way to say that would be she missed right. Um, depends on how you want to look at bowling. Are, you, are we looking at launch angle numbers? Are those consistent? Or are we looking at, um, you know, did she hit her target at the arrows? Either way, it caused a, a 2 8 to be left down lane. She'll make a small move to the right and hook at it. It certainly can be missed in all kinds of ways. We saw players go in the middle of the lane and balls not hook. Perfectly done there by Dasha Kovalova. So Barnes is going to have a chance to step up and win the match outright. Possible shutout situation. Dasha bowling in her own time here. Appreciate that she's taking a moment to breathe, visualize her shape. Visualization is key. Oh, six pin into the 10. That half, that half hit just enough there. Max scores again, 225 for Barnes. 224 for Kovalova. Josie obviously stepping up. She will have a chance to win if she can strike here. She strikes in the ninth. She will have the opportunity to step up and throw all three in the tenth to shut out Dasha Kovalova. Here it is. Oh, what a great shot that was. And she knew it off her hand. Boy, the bowling giveth and bowling taketh away. Disastrous eight pin. Incredible wrap 10 right there, Sid. And ultimately, a great shot from Josie. Process wise, we wouldn't do anything differently as a player. That's a beautiful shot down to the knee almost right there. That's a tough one. All right, no longer in control of her own destiny here on Mother's Day weekend. The mother of one, Lisa Ruth. Barnes max score now 205. But still, three in the tenth, still very important. It would force Dasha to throw two in the tenth. Or excuse me, get the first one. I beg your pardon, in the 10th frame. That 20 pin fill would only get her to 204. Maybe no. And a 3 6 10. That left lane, you know, when she's missed left, it seems like it's been on the left lane. Yeah, absolutely. And so the, the question has to be asked is it a miss left or is it hooking rarely? Right, and as a player, sometimes it hooks early enough that we can't see it. You know, as players, we don't necessarily pick the ball up um, eyesight-wise until it's more than 10 feet down the lane. Important spare. She lost a little bit of count. That's what makes our tour rep so important. If we have a support system here with us, they're important um, because they can sometimes see things that we can't see. Strike here would force a mark from Dasha Kovalova. So this is an important fill. Dasha 
Sasha with a good record on the right lane here. Great shot. The best on the left lane. This is one of those matches where you, you feel like you, you certainly bowled very well to advance. And now you've just got to sit and wait and watch your opponent. Good reset there from Dasha. Field ball always strikes, I feel like. That's one of the uh, more commonly themed or set phrases in bowling. Situation is simple. Kovalova needs a mark to advance. On the lane, low okay. level. Oh, no, my goodness. Two, seven, eight. Again, the count is not important. The spare is. And now, folks, we've got a situation. If she gets two, we're going to a roll off. If she makes it, she will advance and face Jane Sin for the Bowler's Journal Rockford Open Championship. Got to have it. Wow. What a spare by Dasha Kovalova. And she will advance to face Jane Sin of Malaysia for the Bowler's Journal Rockford Open title. And then just that, that uh, look. <laughs> she turns her neck, lowers it to the left, and is like, all right, well, what are we doing now? Yes, Reps. Help. <laughs> That's the, the flag. Help. What are we going to do? Because, you know, I thought I threw that one good. Now what? It was it was getting down to that point, though, right? And she really needed this, this fill opportunity, because you can just, you can just see what she was starting to go through the back half of this game. All right, looks like with a, an inventory solid, perhaps. What? 204 to 192. A great tournament by Moore. Josie Barnes. Happy Mother's Day to Josie. Our I know Lisa Ruth. Excited to see Lee mom in a little bit. Who will walk away with but instead, it's Dasha Kovalova. It's going to be Jane Sin, your open. number one seed. We'll have another bowling ball giveaway, folks. We should have Josie Barnes for you in just a little bit with Leia Zweig standing by here momentarily. A quick correction that we did see um, the GB4 hybrid from Dasha in the fill. Thank you. Rather than the MV Tour. All right, folks, Lane Talk is a valuable USBC Gold partner. We appreciate Lane Talk and uh, what they have provided here so far in this wonderful partnership. Stop by lanetalk.com to find live scoring links and centers across the United States, across the world, and all of the latest products to help you track your scores and improve your game. Bowling ball giveaway, the championship match, all next on Bowl TV. For bowlers who really want to take their game to the next level. The biggest thing, you can tag and label each game. Whenever you use a ball, whatever oil pattern that you're on, you can now track the ball's performance and compare balls side by side. It is incredibly powerful, and it is going to help you analyze your game. Boom! Try Lane Talk Pro free for one month. Upgrade in the app, and we'll see you on Lane Talk. Get a good look at Jane Sin if she gets some practice shots in. And let's hear from Josie Barnes after a great weekend here in Rockford. Josie, fantastic bowling Thank to you, you all week. We saw you in both matches. You bowled fantastic games. What is it like bowling on a pattern that just transitions pretty quickly during uh, the stepladder finals? 
got, I mean, you just have to stay on top of it, right? You, you don't want to be a frame behind because it ends up feeling like you're three frames behind. And so um, good shot making is at a, at a premium. And uh, yeah, you just make your moves from there. One frame was pretty intense to watch. Yeah. What was going through your mind watching that? Um, for me, I wish I would have had the first shot back. Count was big there. She ended up making a spare, so it didn't matter. Um, but that left lane was really giving me fits, and I, I wish I could have gone back and thrown about two shots different on that lane. Amazing. Well, fantastic bowling to you all week. Thank, Thank you, you again. Thank you. Great opportunity there for... Josie Barnes, you heard her talk about it, Sid. The opportunity there to uh, have a couple of shots back on that left lane, and uh, ultimately that was the one. The fill shot was fantastic, but obviously just a li too little too late. And now we turn our attentions to Jane Sin and Dasha Kovalova. Uh, folks, folks, do not forget, uh, in just a few seconds, we will have our third and final bowling ball giveaway uh, of the day. It is from Motive. According to Patrick, he would like you to type the word banana. Sounds a little interesting. Uh, but I would, could, could use some good produce right now, actually. I'm, I'm famished. So please type the word banana and uh, the opportunity for you to uh, seize and grab a motive bowling ball uh, will be yours here in just a little bit. Uh, but Sid, when we left the round of 12, uh, I asked you to give, give Ken a one piece, if you will, on how each player uh, would be able to win this title. And for Jane Sin, you mentioned her ability to repeat shots is second to none. Um, and if she sees what she likes, she will be able to repeat. Um, what else besides that might be the difference, especially uh, against an opponent like Dasha? Dasha is gritty. You know, she never gives up. And she's somebody that's just going to keep throwing good shots at you. And so being able to stay ahead of transition and ultimately see the picture almost near perfectly for 10 frames against somebody like Dasha is key. Dasha has momentum at this point. Um, and so for Jane, being able to get off to a good start here and then keep up with the moves is going to propel her into having a chance to win the title today. All right, folks, don't forget the giveaway is underway. Get out of full screen if you are watching in that mode. Again, get out of full screen so you can see the prompts on the lower left third of the screen. A motive bowling ball. All you have to do is click submit entry, but that's what's on the line. Jane Sin having their final conversations with Rob Gotchell, Steve Jacobs, the reps from uh, Team Storm for uh, Team Brunswick here, Jason Wojnar and Jeff Smith. Click Submit Entry in blue. All right, Cherry Bowl, here we go. Our championship match, 20 grand on the line. Who takes on the second title of the season? Lee Jameson looking for her second. Dasha looking for her sixth. Please cheer these ladies on. Give them a huge round of applause. Who comes out on top right here, right now? The Cherry Bowl, PWBA Bowlers Journal, Rocker Open. Smart move here from Jane, starting on this left lane. She did get choice as the higher seed. Ball arsenal for Jane Sin of Malaysia. Back on tour for the first time since 2019. Wow, what a way to be welcomed back to championship match territory with a 4-9. Saw her throw this ball for most of qualifying. It felt like the Storm DNA coil. Coil, virtual energy blackout, phase two, and attention star for Jane Sin. 4-9, make it. She gave it a run in the early open for Jane Sin. We did not see a lot of opens. From the 32-year-old from Malaysia, PWBA champion, won the Lincoln Open 
back in 2017. Now back to Kovalova, the number two seed just defeated Josie Barnes in a very, very close match. 204 to 192. To a GB4 hybrid on the fill, but looks like she is remaining. The outer limits. And a 10 pin to start the title match here for Kovalova. It's a good start from Dasha. The right lane was quite unclear as we made our way through the last match for her. And so seeing herself throw a good shot and hit the 1 3 was key for the next four frames she's going to pull on that lane. The leg kick made that one. <laughs> you know, as players, right, well, as you just said, whatever you can do. You said it earlier when we talked about uh, two eight makes and such. Whatever you got to do to make it. So if it's a leg kick, is it like a Hogan leg kick or leg drop? Is it like a Macho Man elbow? What, what do you need to do? I don't know, but it is like WWE SmackDown style. That's all I know. We lay the smack down on pins here on the PWPA Tour, folks. Kovalova. Wow. Well, that was powerful, fast, firm. And I don't know how the four pin stood up. Yeah, to be frank, I'm not sure how it hit the right side of the head pin. Off to my right, our player services. Awesome guy. Cecil says, ball speed. He's right. He's so right. I don't have a ton of it, which is why I probably don't recognize it. <laughs> I'm like, how would you do that? No, it's true. I, I had a conversation with my tour reps um, about what in the world went wrong this week. And one thing they told me was my ball speed was too low. So it's all good. Nine spare, nine spare to Kovalova. Now to Jane Sin. Ayers won. That was a different bowling ball than we saw in the left lane. Saw the DNA coil from her on that left lane. And on the right, we saw a phase two. So it looks like she is going to be throwing one ball on each lane. Phase two on the right. She just made the switch interchangeable back into the, I believe, again, was the DNA coil. It's interesting play and strategy, but something that we see uh, certainly players at this level handle all the time. Great shot. We saw it from Liz Colkin on this pair to finish out the round of 12. She threw a very clean ball, the Endeavor on the left lane, a bigger asymmetric, the effect on the right lane. So we said at the, the top of the show, it's possible that as we get into the later part of um, our championship round, we could see somebody need to do that just with how different the left and right lanes have been throughout the weekend. Dasha steps up frame three, lay one pin lead here in the title match. Second event of the season. Nice lane level look, oh man. That was reminiscent of the Josie Barnes wrapped in we just saw in the previous match in the 10th frame. Really good shot there for Kovalova. And now three consecutive single pins. And uh, two of them dimes. Let's look at that spare ball. And thank you to Brunswick Kegel, Lane Talk Storm, and Go Bowling. Proud to go partners of the PWBA. You know Dasha very well, right? So she, you know, in a way kind of said, you know, pump the brakes. That's not what she said, but she gave the motion to that. Mm -hmm. What was she doing right there? Uh, thanking, she would probably tell you, like, thanking the Lord that she made the 10 pin. It was a miss right for her. Not super common. We are all even. Kovalova looking down, making sure those feet are ready. Pop a little left. 
That one has left a fourth arrow. Wow. Boy, what a great shot. That one looked like it was about 23 or so at the arrows. Yeah, that's a move left from her from what we saw in the last match on the left lane. She's sticking with that radical outer limits pearl. All right, quality spare shooting for Kovalova. From what we've seen from Jane Sin, nine spares won't get it done, unfortunately, against Jane Sin. Absolutely not. And you see that Dasha does not sit behind the pair. She spends her time um, off to the what would be the left side of your screen, talking to her tour team, writing things down in her journal. The light mix for Janeson. That's one that's uh, been a good common leave and hit for Janeson. Again, the Pepsi PWBA Lincoln Open champ in Lincoln, Nebraska in 2017. But he's played four other shows. We get a look at that light mixer strike. Runner up in Detroit in 2016. Runner up in Wichita in 2017. Runner-up at the USBC Queens in 2019. And she lost the USBC Queens that year to Dasha Kovalova. That's right. And nothing took out the two there. What did you see on that one, Sid? It was very simple, right off of her hand. She didn't like it. Um, I noticed bowling next to her for 12 games yesterday that when she doesn't like it, she stands up out of it fairly quickly. Looks like she'll hook at this 2-7. Now two opens. A 4-9 on the left lane and now the 2-7 chopped on the left lane. And she's made two queen shows. That's Jane Sin. Mentioned two other standard shows. Now five here on tour. Again, hasn't been back since 2019. Now Kovalova with a three pin gift. She's got the advantage. Can she find some carry? Not on that shot, just a bit outside. Tried the corner and missed. Gut feeling is that she tried to throw it a little bit slower. Um, Dasha's miss when she tries to throw it slower tends to be to the right. Not the easiest of spares. One, two, seven. Nicely done. That one is not easy. Fun fact, she probably shot that about the same as she did the 278 in the 10th frame. Little old teammate fact. She's the one who taught me how to make all those spares. She'd get so mad when we would miss what she felt like were easy spares sometimes. Even match again. Dasha lost count there in frame five. Right now, it's a simple situation. Jane Sin is, she hits the pocket, she's good. She had a couple misses, results in splits. Dasha's going to find some carry. That's left and trouble. Like she kind of tried on that one, tried to help it just a touch. Yeah, same thought went through my head. It's like, well, I have to make it strike. You know, and another. Wichita alum, um, Motive Tour rep out here, one time came with us to a college tournament, and Dasha was there, and I was there, and we were having trouble with Carrie, and it was Nathan Bohr. He looked at the both of us and said, 
you can't make them strike. Like you just have to keep making good shots. And to still to this day, I remember when he told us that because um, it stuck with me. And right now I think Dasha could use that same advice. We can't make it strike. Just keep making good shots. Uh, Jane Sin. Just accrued a 14 pin advantage from her seat as she steps up now in frame six. Beautiful shots thrown on the right lane. Certainly matched up and enjoys that lane. She's perfect three of three on the right, or what looks to be the phase two. But sticking with the game plan, throwing two different balls on each lane. Watch that ball just, just bulldoze the eight and nine. That's what we all strive for. It's beautiful to watch. Pretty key shot here for Jane Sin. That's right. Wow. And you see that look, right, that reaction. It's like, okay, what is going on here? But this has been a trend now, Sid, right? Mm -hmm. Josie Barnes has some trouble on that left lane. and got her, gave her some fits, as she said, with her own words in the post-match interview, and it's uh, showing up here again. Yeah, it was common even throughout qualifying. The left lanes got tricky. They hook early, and then the pattern's 44 feet, so the ball doesn't want to hook down lane. Your feet are forced to the left. It's just kind of annoying. Like, that's the word I would use for it. Like, some, the right lane would be so clear. Like, okay, I know what's going on. And you go to the left lane, and you're like, can we just bowl on the right lane again? Like, let's just only bowl on one lane. Going to see a ball change here for Dasha from the outer limits pearl to the hammer effect. Effect should be just a tad bit cleaner. Has the HK22 cover on it, I believe. Big shot here for Dasha. Bang. Oh, that was executed to perfection. That's what you hope happens when you make a ball change. Like, y you theorize it all in your head and you draw it up on this whiteboard and you're like, this is how it's going to go. Nine times out of ten, that's not how it goes. That's the one out of ten time that it goes right. And she's going to stay with that ball on both lanes. I like the move. She has to. The other ball was not giving her the best to look, making her feel the most comfortable. Teacher trails by 14. Jane Sinmax score 224. Dasha 220. For a double, no. She never got that one right down lane. That one felt like a, a moment of the match, if you will, where if Kovalova strikes there, if she doubles, considering the struggles that Jane Sin has had on the left lane, it's, it's a different ball game. Yeah, absolutely. And I've said it a couple times, and it's important to note the moves have to be bigger on the oils that we're bowling on and on this surface. They, the combination of all of those, those two factors, the moves have to be bigger. Now she came back to talk to her mom, who is here traveling with her throughout the season and last year as well. Jane Sin, perfect on the right lane and continues to be. Smart for Jane to choose that right lane to finish on. I think any higher seed that was watching the matches progress would have done the same thing. It's one of the advantages of having that higher seed yeah, you get less time on the lanes, you have less momentum, but you do get lane choice. Again, just a Mack truck, folks. 
with a full load carry. All 10 back. This left lane has been trouble. But if you feel if she can strike here, at least mark. It's through the nose. Oh, my. Boy, she dodged trouble. And still, Josh would have had some life there. Man. You talking about getting out of the way of some bad stuff. There was a ball change also on that left lane. It's a bold move. I like it. You know, to win out here on tour, you have to be fearless. And Jane was that on that shot. Not her most well executed. But ultimately, if you don't make the change, you're always going to wonder, like, oh, if I was bold and would have done that, would it have worked? So she went to the phase two on the left lane, the ball that she's been throwing on the right. Max scores now 204 for Jane Sin and Kovalova 186. It's 28 pin deficit for Kovalova, who just struck on the ninth. Or should be in the right lane in frame seven. Here she is in the ninth. Made the ball change in the seventh. Beautiful shots. See if she can repeat. That shot too far right down lane. And with that, you're inching closer now to a mathematical situation here. Just look at the back half of the game for Dosh, and she, she had no choice, essentially, but to uh, try something, make a ball change, yeah, especially against, again, a high-caliber opponent who certainly had you know, the best look on the right lane. Kovalova will head to the 10th frame. Again, that max score, 165. But any non-strike here in the 10th. And Jane Sin will take home the crown. That was one of the best shots we've seen from Dasha on the left lane. Allowed that one to get further to the right. This one is mathematic, mathematically over, excuse me. Jane Sin, not bold on tour since 2019, now a champion again. And representing Malaysia, Dasha holding a really good match against Josie Barnes. But ran into some trouble early part of the match trying to find the proper carry second part of the match makes the ball change and then ran into split trouble twenty thousand dollars wow <laughs> another good showing out here for dasha Maybe she'll bounce back next week at the Queens with a win. I don't know. Maybe. Well, the last time these two met, it was for a major championship at the 2019 Queens. Dasha won this one. This time, Jane Sin will get the best of Dasha. And she will continue to be perfect on the right lane. Jane Sin from Malaysia. There's the smile and a title for Jane Sin. Still perfect on the right lane and still no perfection. Here through two weeks here on tour. The Queens is upcoming, folks. Don't forget next week from the Ashwaubenon Bowling Alley and Ashwaubenon, Wisconsin, again, just next door to Green Bay. That's upcoming. Huge 
204 to 154. Dasha Kovalova, tonight's runner-up. She will take home $10,000 for her efforts. All right, Robin Graves. I'll hang out with a general manager. Tony Hall. I'll speak with the champion. We have our general manager here, Mr. Tony Hall, for our trophy presentation. On behalf of the Cherry Bowl, PWBA, and Bowlery Journal, I'd like to present this trophy for your championship this week. Great bowling. It's been a great week. Congratulations, my dear. So you've been away from the PWBA for a few years, but way to come back. What was your mindset this week and just coming back to tour overall? A right big hole did not get open. Uh, I was uh, back home for the Malaysia Open and uh, I did uh, finish fourth place. And I think that's keep, keep me going after that. Nice, nice. So. The lanes, you know, played differently throughout the week. What was your strategy coming into the championship match? I mean, you led most of the tournament, and now you are the champion. Uh, basically, uh, I just keep it simple, like just stay down on my target. Um, if if there's a need of ball change, then we'll do so. And that's it. Anyone you would like to thank? Uh, I would like to thank uh, my family back home, back in Malaysia. And I would like to thank my coaches, uh, Harvey, Fabrice, Shia, uh, Ben Heng, Wendy, and our team manager, Mr. Maradona. Uh, I would like to also thank uh, the Malaysian Champion Bowling Congress for letting us here this season. And also our armpit, uh, I would say, our Majelis Sukan Negara, uh, which is National Sports Council for allowing us to be here today. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2024 Oh, we got more, we got more, we got more. And also, uh, I would like to thank Turbo, 3G, and Rotor Group for sponsoring. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2024 PWBA Bowlers Journal Rocker Open Champion is Lee Jason. Congratulations, Thank you to the Cherry Bowl, our host, the summer family, Tony Hall, everyone here. Thank you all for coming out all week. Please follow the PWBA tour on uh, Bowl TV. Next up, we have the USBC Queens. Follow along for all the action. Thank you all for coming out. Safe travels, and we hope to see you soon. All right, folks. As you can see, the photos being taken. Jane Sin. Have Jane Sin, your champion, here in the booth in just one moment. There'll be some additional photos to take here in a second. She will get a photo, of course, with the general manager, one Tony Hall. If you don't know Tony and you don't know the Rock Valley team in college bowling and you're somebody who's thinking about going to community college, you should check out their program. Quick plug for them. They are an incredible program. They teach their athletes well. Multi-time national champion. They've won. Uh, they've won a couple. They got a banner up from the 2022. I think they won last year as well. What a nice trophy.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the 2024 PWBA Bowlers Journal Rockford Open is with us, Miss Jane Sin. Uh, Jane, uh, first of all, congratulations. Uh, it's been a few years since you've been on the PWBA tour, but honestly, it, it looks like you've taken no breaks. I know you've been bowling competitively, but what does it mean to capture title number two on this tour? It, it means a lot to me. Uh, it's been so many years that I've been like back in the PWBA tour, and it's really special for me because uh, this year I'm here alone without the team, and I'm doing this uh, all by myself. And I think it takes a lot of courage to do so. And I think I have more confidence right now to believe in myself more. And yeah. It's hard to believe a player of your caliber wouldn't have that level of confidence, but it is a little bit different as you described. We are all used to seeing you and your teammates. Uh, what did you learn about yourself, especially navigating a very difficult uh, pair of lanes, especially that left lane, which looked tricky? Oh, basically, I uh, just uh, keep it very simple. If, it's, if, the, if the ball works, great. If not, change. Yeah. I, 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 I love how simple you <laughs> keep things. Because if we all did that, I think we would all be better bowlers. Oh, 100%. And, Jane, I had the opportunity to bowl next to you for 12 games yesterday. And to me, it seemed as though you were so confident and almost, like, robotic as how easy it was for you to make great shots. You talked a little bit about your process with Robin, but what exactly is it that you focus on that allows you to do so? Um, basically, uh, I just uh, focus more on uh, hitting on the targets and, you know, be comfortable on the lanes and... You know, if it works, great. If not, time to change. Yeah. That's I love cool. that. That's incredible. Congratulations. Thank you. Final question here for you, Jane. I know uh, we, you talked to me earlier this week, and I asked how many events you would be bowling. And sometimes, you know, in, in the past, it might be four, could be five, but you're going to bowl the entire season. Is that correct? Yep. All right. So what are you looking forward to? you got to win early. I mean, in your first event of the season, what are your goals now for the rest of the 2024 season? I'll just enjoy every tournament and go one by one. No hurry. I like that. Mm -hmm. Well, Jane Sin, ladies and gentlemen, your 2024 PWBA Bowlers Journal Rockford champ. Congratulations. I know you got some media to uh, handle and get to, so we'll let you do that. Uh, congrats again. Thank you. All right, we'll allow Jane to exit stage left. We'll take it to the lane to one sec. We'll bring Sid back in to, uh, to close it out here in just one moment. It's a, uh, what, a, what a mindset. You're talking about keeping it simple. And as players, uh, Sid, we often, you, you talk about it, every player often talks about keeping the process as simple as possible. And it literally couldn't get simpler than what Jane just described, and it's certainly a, a big time reason why uh, she's not only a champion today, but a champion in the past and a world champion as well. Yeah, for sure. You know, I talked a little bit about it during the championship round. Women, we tend to blame ourselves. And she just talked about how she does the opposite. You know, she said, if it's not working, I'm going to do something different. And it's easy enough to say, there's something outside of me that's going on. The lane is changing, this pair is different. This pattern isn't what I expected. I maybe chose wrong once or twice, but ultimately it was outside herself, and it's cool that she has that mindset and keeps it so simple. Well, Jane, a two-time champion. You heard her say something that was uh, quite unique. You, you hear it a lot from a, the collegiate perspective, um, but this was a different win for her because her team was not here. This was, she did this alone. She did this by herself, which um, exuded, obviously, a different type of confidence, and she navigated a tough pair in some very – uh, difficult opponents. When you look back on this show, say what will stand out for you? It came down to patience, you know, aggressive patience, you know, confident, bold decision making. She did that. She made an incredible ball change on that left lane. Not the best shot we saw her make, sure. but still a bold move. And if Dasha would have done that a little bit quickly, could we have seen a different result? Who knows? We'll never know. Ultimately, Jane was the one who did that, made good shots, had quality um, second ball 
second balls that went down the lane, made her spares, and became our champion today. She is the champion indeed, and a wonderful job again by Sydney Brummett. Sid, thanks again for joining us here today on Bowl TV. Thanks for having me. Folks, that is going to do it for us. I uh, want to congratulate all of our bowling ball giveaway winners tonight, our T-shirt uh, giveaway winners uh, from this weekend as well. I'd like to thank the crew. Uh, wonderful job this week. Leah Zweig uh, doing some wonderful post-match interviews here today uh, and yesterday. Curtis Von Kruger, uh, Ben Glasscock getting a ton of content. We look forward to seeing more of that. Uh, in the near future as well. Patrick Martinez uh, stepped into that producer role and he handled it very well, and I appreciate Patrick. Did a wonderful job today. Jason Thomas uh, here as well. Of course, Damon Sirocco, Robin Graves, Donovan and Gene in PR, Shea from marketing. A job well done this week. Want to thank all of our gold partners, uh, Kegel, Gold Bowling, Storm, Lane Talk, and Brunswick. Uh, we appreciate all of our gold partners and all of our uh, brands and certified approved uh, partners as well. I want to thank the United States Bowling Congress and the Bowling Proprietors Association of America and their respective boards. Again, Kegel, the official lane maintenance provider of the PWBA and the USBC. And certainly, folks, without the PWBA athletes, we would not have anything to discuss. A phenomenal championship setting tonight. Jane Sin comes away with the victory. Uh, finally, you, the Bowl TV community, for hanging out with us next week. It's the first major of the season. The USBC Queens will be on the air. Practice, we've got uh, the PB PWBA Hall of Fame dinner uh, on Wednesday night as well. So please join us for that. Qualifying begins on May 16th. But we'll be live, of course, we're getting practice and the PWBA Hall of Fame on May 15th. So stay tuned for that. So for Sydney Brummett, Patrick Martinez, and all involved, my name is Emil Williams Jr. Again, shout out to Tony Hall and everyone here at the Cherry Bowl historic venue. So another championship tonight on the PWBA Tour. Jane Sin from Malaysia, your champion, as we send you on your way. This has been a presentation of the 2024 PWBA Bowlers Journal Rockford Open. You watched it live and only on Bowl TV. Bowling lives here. Good night, folks.